All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's a great day. Uh, it's a great day for the Billikens. We had an awesome weekend. I uh, want to acknowledge a couple pieces first. How about our women's basketball team? Rebecca, congratulations. Winning the WNIT on that big win on Saturday over Minnesota. Congratulations, uh, staff. It was a great celebration. We had a, we had no, a couple other great things that happened on, over the weekend. One other, uh, they got back late last night, but our baseball coach, Darren Hendrickson, had his 500th win yesterday. How good is that? And then, then we came to an agreement Friday night with the guy that you're going to introduce today. That, uh, that helped me sleep a little better. I got up to six hours of sleep, so that was a world record. But, uh, no, we had a great weekend. We appreciate all of you being here. Um, there's, so, there's so many thanks to go around. Um, many people had to pitch in to help make this happen. And uh, it starts with our chairman of the board, Joe Conran, who helped uh, from night and day. We were texting at wee hours of the night. Joe, thank you for helping make this all happen. Thank you. <laughs> to, to a guy in Florida who I know is following, Dr. Chaffetz, who is uh, deeply involved. I spoke to him this morning. He's so fired up to have Josh here. Um, as, as Rich and I spoke many times, uh, and we talked to people nationally, the, the name Rick Majerus kept coming up. And, and, and uh, Rich, Rich is like he's kind of a new era Rick. And, and uh, Josh will share some moments that he had with Rick back in the day. But uh, what Rich did to help us through this process, I can't thank him enough. So thanks to uh, Dr. Shapitz, even though he's not here. We had, we had many in the community, and personally in the community, that helped me through this process. Um, from Bob O'Loughlin, who Bob was just here, we had, many, uh, we had many a breakfast out at the MAC through this process, and Bob kept telling me, Chris, just make sure you get the right one, and I think we got the right one, so Bob, I told him that this morning, I'm thrilled. Um, a guy by the name of John Johnson, who I spoke to many times, who he, his whole deal is, uh, how do you be relentless in your aggr aggressiveness, but also be respectful? And I think we were that. I think that's part of what brought this uh, partnership together is the trust that we built throughout this process. And then there's a guy by the name of Jim Cavanaugh who I spoke to regularly, and he talked about how do you build sustainable success. And so we, I listened to all these people as we went through it. There's a guy in the back row here who I spoke to many times, and he's just this calming influence, uh, Alan Vogt. Alan, I appreciate your, your calls and, and all of your support as we went through this. And then... Uh, and then obviously uh, my family, I get, I get caught up every once in a while. I'm trying not to get emotional. I always get emotional about my family. I don't know why, but Joanne, if anybody wants to know the true story of all this, you could talk to her. Now she's trained at not speaking, but uh, thank you, Joanne. Uh, and uh, Jack, my son, who is an analytics crazy man, who uh, is one of Josh's, uh, he's, been one, he's been on the Josh Shirts fan, uh, fandom for over a year when I first watched uh, Coach, uh, coach in the Missouri Valley a, a year ago. But uh, I thank all of our family and then our staff. Lisa Miller has been the, a the AD's assistant for many, many, many years. And she's been unbelievable until I thought we lost her on Friday. I thought, uh, I thought I had finally driven her over the top because she has seen everything in this place for, I won't name the number of years. She started here when she was three. But, uh, but to Lisa and to uh, Chad and Janet and Brian Cunnerman's done an unbelievable job and our whole staff of rolling out the social media communication. I want to thank all of you guys for, for helping make this happen. How, could we give our staff a, a round of applause? Uh, and, and two other unbelievably important people on campus, uh, Vice President Danielle Wee, I think, is Danielle here? Danielle, thank you for uh, helping make this process go. She was here, I don't know where she went. And then uh, our Vice President for HR, Mickey Loon, and his team, and I know some of his team are here. I appreciate you guys, the fastest onboarding in the history of St. Louis University, but uh, it's great to have a whole community come together. But our leader never flinched. Our leader, uh, Dr. Pastello, who's been with us through this whole journey, and his whole conversation was keep doing what you're doing, you know what our values are, and you know what it takes to deliver success for student athletes. And when you have a president that is there with you every step of the way, that's committed to serving student athletes and committed to filling this arena with great basketball, that's how you get this done. And so please, 
please help me welcome Dr. Fred Bastello. It is a good day. I want to begin with thanks. Thanks to all of those who brought us to this moment this morning. And I want to begin with our fans and supporters who are with us day in, day out, year in, year out, cheering on the Billikens and supporting the Billikens in any number of ways. Thank you. And in terms of individuals, I must start with our Director of Athletics, Chris May. Early on in this process, Chris focused on the person who we welcome as our new coach today. And throughout this process, Chris provided exactly the leadership we needed to be successful. You cannot underestimate how dedicated Chris is to this program and its successes and how skillfully he led this effort. Chris, thank you. I also want to thank all the other members of Billiken Athletics, from Janet Overly on down, for all that you do for this program and for your hard work to get us to this moment of celebration. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I want to take a moment to particularly thank those trustees who were involved in this effort. And specifically, I want to express my gratitude to Board Chair Joe Conran. I have dealt closely, worked very closely with Chairman Conran for the 10 years I have been here at St. Louis University. We started at the same time, he and his Board Chair role and me in the presidency. And what was clear from our first moment together is he is just absolutely insane about Billiken athletics and particularly men's basketball. Joe was deeply involved in this process, advising us, encouraging us. So Joe, thank you so much for your leadership here. I also want to thank uh, trustee and Billiken enthusiast, Rich Chaffetz, who was also very encouraging, very supportive, uh, providing advice and wisdom uh, to us as we move through this along the way. And then a number of other trustees, as uh, Chris identified, Bob Laughlin, Johnny Johnson, Jim Cavanaugh, thank you. We have a great board of trustees uh, who have supported us, current and former trustees. And I'm thankful for the coaches and staff of the past several years, led by Coach Ford, who elevated our program, who elevated our program so that we could reach this point of inflection, the point of inflection we celebrate today for men's basketball. And finally, thank you to the members of the press for your interest for your coverage, and for your understanding of the endless no-comment comments. <laughs> Stu, you're a good man. <laughs> uh, each fall, when I greet new students and parents, uh, I do so in this wonderful arena. And I introduce them to a question that they are likely to hear from that day forward. Coach Schertz, uh, pay attention here. You need to be ready for this question, too. The question is, what is a Billiken? Now, I tell them, a Billiken is a mythical figure, a mythical figure that stands for the way the world ought to be. As members of a Jesuit university, we are all Billikens. We commit ourselves to making the world the way it ought to be. It is a great privilege to welcome a new Billiken today one who shares this commitment, Coach Josh Schertz. Coach Schertz is a leader who has a vision for what St. Louis University men's basketball can and should be. He is a coach who is invested in helping each student athlete reach their full potential on the court, in the classroom, and in their future endeavors. And he is a colleague who will join a talented roster of coaches and staff who are taking Billiken Athletics to a new level of excellence as demonstrated just this past weekend with our women's basketball team 
winning the WNIT. We are excited about what Coach Shirt's arrival means for the men's basketball seasons ahead. The exhilaration the team will bring to this arena. The drive to become one of the great Jesuit University basketball programs consistently playing in the NCAA tournament. I am also thrilled that Coach Shirt shares our commitment to what makes St. Louis University and Billiken Athletics special. Our focus on the care for every student, athlete, and colleague, physically, mentally, academically, and spiritually. And our commitment to values, values that include gratitude and community. In this effort to develop student athletes and engage their families, we know that Coach Church has a full partner, a full partner in his spouse, Natalia Celebos Schertz. Welcome to St. Louis University. It is a pleasure to have you here as coach's partner in this effort. Today we also embrace Josh and Natalia's two sons, Jordan and Jaden. Josh, Natalia, Jordan, and Jaden, welcome to the Billiken family. Thank you for saying yes to St. Louis University. Here's to all the success that lies ahead. Go Billikens. Thank you, Fred. Uh, before I get into the profile and what we're really looking for a head coach, we do have a, a presentation here. Uh, Natalia, we need you up here. Come up here. We got a little something for you. Yeah. Okay, the boys, boys come with her. She's, she's a little scared. Come on up. Come on up. We talked last night about the Billiken, and she's like, how do you get one of those? I said, well, you put your name on a building, you do a lot of these things, or you come and be our next spouse of the head men's basketball coach. So on behalf of all Billiken family and nation, here's your official first Billiken. All right, so we went into this process. Let me share a little bit of, of, of what we were looking for. We, we had a profile. Profile for what do you look in a head coach? First and foremost, you're looking for a winner. You're, you're looking for a winner. Who, who has won a nonstop in their career? We found a winner that in a lifetime batting percentage, lifetime winning at 787, which is in, a, in the elite level of college basketball coaches. You look for an authentic leader, one that develops leaders in young people. You look especially for a coach that fits your values. And we talked real, real early on in this process with Josh about our values. Starts with trust. Starts with a commitment to excellence. Starts with caring for people. Starts with a foundation of gratitude. I was so proud that yesterday in the first two minutes of his conversation with the team yesterday that he talked about trust. He talked about trust in a coach trust in a student athlete. When I saw that, I'd even reaffirmed that I believe we're at the right place. We're looking for a coach who believes that this place can be packed, that believes that we can compete not only for A-10 championships, but for the big prize. We, we're looking for a coach that believed that Billiken basketball can be on the nationally elite level. We're looking for a coach that could make runs in the NCAA tournament all arrows started pointing to one person. We, uh, we, then we went into the market. We started talking to people about college basketball and we laid out our profile. And many, many people said, Josh Schertz is your guy. We, we had people talk about his elite basketball mind. We had people tell us, tell me that he is the best relationship builder in college basketball with young people. Uh, as we had several people, including Dr. Chaffetz, Fran Frischel, and others, said he's going to remind you a lot in how he coaches in your former coach in Rick. 
I was blessed to, I don't want to say I snuck in, but I did, I did stop in and see him coach someplace where people didn't exactly know I was there. And when you watch the connection he has with young people, I watch real hard timeouts, coming in and out of timeouts, coming on and off the court before the game, halftime and after the game. And you could see his connection with his young people. You heard nationally people start talking about he's a community builder. He believes that building community and connection of the team and the community are deeply important. So that's what we started to hear. And then, we, then Josh and I, we had Zooms, we had many calls, we, had, uh, we might have had in-person conversations, I don't know. But uh, a couple of things that jumped out. One, we're gonna play our best basketball when it matters most. Two, we're gonna play to our standards. Um, Watched him coach against Michigan State. Watched him coach a year ago against Belmont. Watched him coach many games. In fact, uh, Jaden, I watched Jaden get a little shout out from uh, an official in one game. Jaden, you'll fit in with the Billiken faithful really well. We can't wait to see you over here on the bench getting after him. But what we kept learning and what I kept reading is that we're talking about an authentic leader. We're talking about a person that really connects with people the person that believes in leading young people and how you put them in position. And the most important thing I believe is he talked about servant leadership, which the great ones, the great coaches, I believe, are servants of their student athletes. And so I couldn't be more proud and honored to bring up and introduce to you the 27th head coach of the St. Louis Billikens, Josh Schertz. Well, first, uh, let me thank uh, everybody for being here today. I know some of you uh, have to or mandated to, but uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, but no, uh, really, really appreciate it. And some of the team uh, managers, uh, you know, obviously staff, etc. cetera. Um, but but uh, incredibly uh, special day for me. Uh, could not be more excited uh, to be the next uh, head men's basketball coach here uh, at St. Louis. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible honor um, and uh, can't wait to get started. Um, want to thank uh, Dr. Pastello, uh, Chris May, uh, along with the, uh, the Board of Trustees. Um, they were just incredible throughout this process. Uh, you know, Chris touched on a little bit. Um, it was an interesting, uh, to say the least, uh, month. Uh, for, for us, um, you know, post, uh, post uh, you know, the Missouri Valley Tournament. But um, Chris, as, as Dr. Bastello said, Chris did an amazing job of um, making me a priority, uh, showing how committed he was, uh, letting me learn about the values, but never came off as uh, trying to push me or, or put me in a situation where um, you know, I wasn't able to, I felt, I felt pressure to make a decision. And uh, that's a hard needle to thread. Uh, to be honest with you, and he just navigated that beautifully, and I felt like um, as time went on, uh, it, it, it just felt right. But I got to, uh, because we played so long, got to develop a, a great relationship with not only he, but Dr. Pastello, uh, as well as Dr. Shea Fitz and others, and um, St. Louis just fit what I was looking for uh, perfectly, and uh, incredibly grateful uh, to be standing up here in front of you today. Um, want to thank uh, and recognize my family uh, my wife, Natalia, um, she's uh, an equal partner in, in this. Um, she's been, uh, you know, all 16 years I've been a head coach. Uh, you know, I, I always talk about, uh, I think if you do coaching right, uh, it's kind of like being a step parent, right? It, it's, um, you learn to uh, love and care for kids that are not biologically yours, like they're biologically yours, just like what a good step parent would do. And uh, she's been, you know, she embodies that uh, more than any person I've ever been around. Uh, she's, uh, it's aspirational for me to, to be as good of the kids as she is and care for the kids the way she does. And um, she brings a, a mother figure and a woman's touch to a program that uh, I think 
you know, we always talk about family, but, but she, she certainly makes it family, and so I'm incredibly lucky uh, to, to have you. Love you. Thank you uh, for this. Um, my son, thank you. My son, Jaden, uh, will be uh, transferring in uh, with me from Indiana State here to uh, SLU. It's not getting quite the national uh, recognition that Tucker DeVries following Darren did. I'm not sure why. I don't know. Um, but it's really not hit the, you know, ESPN's not doing stories on it, but I can't figure it out. But he's going to be joining us, uh, so we will, be, uh, we will be bringing him with us. So, um, I, uh, but it's been uh, a, a joy to, uh, to be able to be around him, uh, to spend this time with him. As we all know that uh, in athletics, coaching, uh, administration, uh, you know, staff, you commit a lot of your time to other people's kids. It's amazing to have uh, the chance to spend day to day with your own, and that's something special. And uh, it's made these last two years and hopefully the years to come uh, the, some of the best of my coaching career. So love you, thank you. Uh, and then my, my oldest son, uh, Jordan. Uh, Jordan is uh, just unbelievable. Um, I love him to death. He's uh, going to be moving here to St. Louis with us. Look forward to sharing this journey with him, and he'll be at all the games and be the best cheer in the, uh, in, in, in the crowd for sure, rooting Billiken basketball on. Um, I do want to thank uh, my players at Indiana State. Um, I'm not uh, uh, dumb enough or crazy enough to think I'm up here because of me. Uh, I'm up here because I had some uh, unbelievable uh, players who were phenomenal uh, competitors, uh, guys who uh, created uh, an incredible team uh, this year, uh, certainly with 32 wins, but last year and going back to my time at, at, at you know at Lincoln Memorial, uh, I've, I've been incredibly lucky to surround myself uh, with some remarkable young men who have gone on to accomplish and create great great teams and gone to accomplish uh, some incredible things. So I uh, want to make sure I, I, I thank those players because, again, I'm, I know I'm not up here uh, because of me. I um, want to thank all the former uh, coaches and players that, that built uh, St. Louis Billiken basketball. I um, want you to know that uh, uh, this is your program. Uh, I'm honored to be the caretaker of it. Uh, but that's what I am, the caretaker. And uh, it's your guys' program. Uh, we want to make sure all, all the Billikens that, that built this uh, feel welcome, uh, that we want you back, uh, want you involved. Uh, would love to have you around. Uh, my staff and I will be you know, open in, in any way we can to accommodate that. Um, I did get a chance to talk to Coach Grar yesterday, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, he's, he's going in for uh, uh, some knee replacement surgery, but uh, once he's uh, up and around, We'll have him back and, uh, and get that rolling. So look forward to getting to meet him in person. I know Chris mentioned uh, uh, Rick Majerus. And, um, you know, uh, Coach is somebody uh, that, you know, I, I, when I first really started thinking about getting into coaching, um, he was somebody I really looked up to, not just because we obviously share an affinity for food uh, and, uh, and wear cool sweaters and, uh, and even have cool hairdos. So, um, but... It was, it was more than that, although that's a lot of commonality. Um, and so when, uh, when I first decided I want to get into coaching, um, I, didn't, I didn't have much money, but I scraped together enough. And I flew to Salt Lake City. And the first thing I did when I was a college student is I went and I spent four weeks uh, and worked at Coach Majerus' camp just to be around him and just to, just to see what it was like for him. And, he was, and, and you know, I, I stayed... Um, you know, different in dorms, and I stayed with uh, his assistant, Jeff Strom. I mean, I, I, uh, I spent four weeks, though, in Salt Lake City just watching everything he did, uh, trying to emulate everything he did, the, the way he taught the game, the detail. Um, he was a genius, uh, one of the, you know, all-time, in my opinion, uh, great coaches, not just in basketball but in sports. And, uh, you know, it's an honor to try to uh, come here and hopefully fulfill what, what he thought uh, this place could be. And I look forward to that, to that challenge. Um, I, you know, Indiana State, um, you know, I was got to sit in the same chair that Coach Wooden did and now here at SLU, uh, Coach Majera. So I don't have to worry about being – the cool part is there's no pressure to be the best coach ever at Indiana State or SLU. Those are taken, so I'm, I'm happy to uh, not have that pressure to, to have to try to live up to those guys. Um, if I was going to leave a place that I was uh, incredibly happy, and, and I was at Indiana State, um, make no mistake, it was a, uh, an amazing uh, community, um, had great relationships, uh, and, and a place that was very invested. Um, 
I knew early on it was only going to be for a place that I felt like was a life-changing opportunity and a great fit for me personally. And those were the things that, uh, the boxes that had to be checked. And, uh, and I found that uh, here in, in St. Louis. Um, the alignment across the board from the very top down, um, going through this process, you could just see um, the facilities that they have here, the resources, the infrastructure, um, all the values uh, that they talk about are aligned with, with who I am as a person and how I want to run my program. And um, you don't find that all the time. I know people, uh, uh, as the process wore on, um, you know, and it went on for a while. Uh, Chris said it last night, you know, uh, we had dinner. He's like, you know, they never wavered. And, and just as time went on for me, uh, I know there were some anxious moments for them. Uh, but uh, for me, it just grew on me and dawned on me that this was the right fit for me, my family, and for to move my career forward. And, um, you know, it checked all my boxes. Um, we have goals here, uh, you know, certainly not just you know, in terms of winning championships, I think every place has that. But I also think, you know, uh, where, where we're aligned is, uh, is that we want our, our, our players to have an exceptional student athlete experience while they pursue winning championships. It's certainly uh, we all want to win, cut down nets. We all want to do what our women's team just did. But, uh, but we, I think there's an alignment in terms of, man, we want every single player to have an exceptional student athlete experience while they pursue greatness, while they pursue championships. Um, you know, I think there's a, a shared values uh, you can see in the Champion Center um, about not just, you know, the transactional piece of this, but that the holistic development of our student athletes matters to SLU and it matters to me. Um, and you can just see it. You walk through there, all the different resources, amenities um, from nutrition to counseling, to sports psychology, to the practice. I mean, you go through it. Um, I'm big on creating an environment where our uh, student athletes uh, can pursue being the best versions of themselves. And uh, SLU is, is at this place, when you walk in it, um, it just radiates off to you that, that, that this is what we want. We want to create an environment for you to be the very best version of yourself. Um, I'm also incredibly excited uh, to become a part of this community uh, of St. Louis. Um, I've heard so much about it. Um, and just, you know, obviously very new to everything here, but it's been amazing. Um, just being out and around the town, uh, I can't wait uh, to immerse myself uh, in this community uh, with these people. Um, I've, we've done that, Natalia and I have, our family has uh, in Harrogate, uh, you know, and in Terre Haute, which combined, I think, is like 65,000 people, so a little more people to immerse ourselves with here, but, uh, but we look forward to doing that. We look forward to being out and about on campus and in the city of St. Louis. And uh, we, you know, it's an unbelievable basketball area, uh, getting out and, and connecting here with the coaches in the community in the area, the AAU programs. Um, we want to be, and we are, you know, St. Louis's team. And, and, and we certainly want to uh, represent that every single day. So looking forward to that. And also, um, you know, can't wait to, I think Chris hit on it, uh, connect our program to this community. And that's where the magic happens. It's what you saw uh, at Lincoln Memorial. Uh, over our time there. It's what you saw uh, in Terre Haute when you looked up and you're seeing 10,000 people in a, in a town of 60,000 uh, coming to the games. And, and you guys that watched us at Hinkle, uh, those were, you know, neutral site games. But uh, there was no neutral uh, when, you're, when you were talking about, you know, Indiana State and our fans. And when you can connect the program, the community, uh, that's where the magic does happen. Our job, my staff's job, is to give uh, the people here a, a players that they and a, and a team that they can wrap their arms around, that they want to support, that they want to get behind, uh, quality young men, and that uh, um, are first class and represent uh, SLU basketball in a first class way, uh, in the classroom, on the court, and in the community. And and you have my word, uh, we will do that. We will, we will we will make no missteps in putting together a program that everybody around will be proud to be a part of. Um, in terms of style of play, I hope. Uh, People are going to see an exciting brand of basketball, entertaining. Um, they're going to see a group that plays with a, a fast pace, joy, a group that plays for one another, a group that cares about winning, a group that cares about each other. Um, you know, I think uh, hopefully a group that plays to win and that winning is most important to it. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think that's a, a huge piece. And I think that's 
going to be attractive. We want to get people in here, and people want to watch. They want you to win, but they want to be entertained, and we plan on doing both those things. We plan on winning, but we plan on doing it in a way that uh, is entertaining for everybody. Um, I know our offense will get a lot of pub, and that's the way it is in basketball and, and should be, um, but we hope to play you know, really high-level uh, and efficient basketball on both ends. Um, I think I told this to Chris, and he almost fell over, but uh, we were actually in, in the Missouri Valley's, uh, uh, if you know anything about that league, it's a defensive league. Uh, there's some great defensive coaches, Brian Wardle, Ben Jacobson, uh, Darren DeVries, et cetera. Those got a lot of great coach in that league. And um, again, kind of an underrated fact, but we were number one uh, in the Missouri Valley uh, in, in defensive efficiency in our, our 20 league games. So, um, you know, we were not only the best offense in the league, but we were the best defense in the league. And uh, those things tie together. And so we'll be a team that hangs our hat on defending. And then if our defense is good, that'll allow us to play the way we want to play offensively. And so, uh, but we look forward to putting together a product on this floor and packing this place out as people watch us and watch a group that plays the right way, plays connected, plays together, but plays to win and plays both ends of the floor. So uh, excited about that. Uh, a little a bit about and uh, my vision, you know, and, and philosophy in terms of the program. Um, core value-wise, and I covered a little bit of this with the guys yesterday, but, you know, and I think Chris touched on as well, our number one, you know, core value is relationships. Um, I'm a relationship guy. Um, you know, I, I am somebody who, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to lead. Uh, I lead by connecting. I lead by serving. Um, that's the way I choose to lead. I don't think there's a right or wrong way, but that's the way I do it. Um, I'm going to pour everything I have into our players, uh, be completely invested and devoted uh, to them, uh, their successes, and uh, they're going to get everything that I have, our staff has, uh, to make them better. But the relationships aren't just from me and our, our staff to the players. It's you know probably the most important relationships uh, in, in any team or player to player and making sure that we uh, bring in people that have shared values uh, as it relates to work and competition and being a great teammate and all the other things that go into it, but uh, preparation, et cetera. And we will do that. We'll bring in a group uh, that, that has shared values. And so those relationships, you know, coach to coach, coach to player, player to player, player to coach, uh, will all be in alignment. But that's, that's our number one core value is that relational piece. Uh, the second is work. Uh, I wish there was some sort of shortcut to it, but uh, a lot of you in here know there's, there's, no, there's no secrets. Uh, the magic is always in the work, and you got to roll your sleeves up and do it. You got to do it every single day. Uh, you got to put your signature on your work every single day, and and we will, and um, we're gonna you know uh, get after it. Um, our guys will. Um, there'll be a, a daily process, and um, you know we'll focus on that uh, on on a, on a regular basis. But we you know we always say you know uh, we're not for everybody, and we know that, uh, but we're for the right ones. And if we were for everybody, I don't think we would have been able to accomplish what we have. Uh, over the last 16 years when I've been a part of these teams. So um, we don't want that ever, you know, lower our standards for how we operate. Uh, the third core value is growth. Um, you guys have seen a lot at uh, going back to my time at LMU and uh, certainly, um, and we'll bring it here, Indiana State, uh, Kaizen. And Kaizen's a, a Japanese term um, that basically, um, I was always looking for something cool. Uh, you know, Bill Belichick had do your job and all people have really cool slogans. I had no cool slogan. It was like, uh, you know, embrace the growth process. No one wants that, you know. Uh, so, um, you know, so I've always been very process oriented. And what Kaizen means is uh, commitment to continual improvement. And basically the way we frame it with our guys is we're about daily excellence, daily improvement. Um, and and that's, that's the core of who we are. I think, you know, we want our players. I think, you know, player development is personal development. I think to be the best player you can be, you got to be the best man and person you can be. Um, and so we're going to really espouse that with our guys and hold our guys to that. But um, we're going to certainly help our guys develop the very best they can academically uh, as a person. And certainly we want the, them as a player as well to reach their full potential. And so that growth piece for us is a third core value. And then last is, is winning. Um, you know, I think uh, there, there's um, – you know, some guys play for stats, some guys play to win. Um, I think uh, you got to get guys that, that, that play to win, that care about uh, team results over everything else. And um, a lot of people say they do, but, but it's, uh, you find that there's a lot of great players who aren't great winners, and there's some great winners who aren't great players. But the best players are both. And uh, we're going to hunt 
uh, you know, great players who are great winners. And if we miss, we hope we miss on a guy who's maybe not as great a player as we thought, but's a great winner. If you have that, you got a chance to 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 win a lot of games at a high level. It's it's the secret sauce uh, of who we are. But those are really from a value standpoint, a core value standpoint, how the vision I see for building this, the philosophy which we're going to undertake to do it. Um, I could not be uh, more honored uh, to have this opportunity. Um, this is uh, exactly uh, where I want to be, exactly the, the, the place for me. Can't wait to partner, uh, not just with Chris and with Dr. Costello, uh, Joe and Dr. Chaffetz and the board uh, and Bob and everybody, but, but everyone here, the fans, the staff, the department, our team, and uh, look forward to building something special. And uh, that work begins today. Thank you so much. Uh, now, I think there's some microphones, so we'll do some Q&A here, and then Josh will go in and do uh, individual media stuff. So any questions, uh, have at it, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on from there. But thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you. All right, we have Ellie back here in the back with a microphone, if anybody in the back row needs to ask questions. Um, anybody up here with a question? Hey Josh, Ben Fredrickson, St. Louis Post Dispatch. Welcome to St. Louis. Congratulations. You. Um, you talked about, you mentioned the word joy. Um, why is that such an important part of your coaching style, and, and how do you foster that in in players and, and guys on your team? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's a, a central value uh, to who we are. I think you you try to, uh, you know, in recruiting, I think you try to find guys uh, that that can you know bring an energy. I think there's you know people who uh, can drain energy from a room, people who bring it, and, and those who leave it neutral. Um, we certainly look for it. We try to uh, coach in a way that, that allows joy. Uh, we, we, um, we try to take uh, what we do very seriously, but not take ourselves too seriously. We try to find fun in, uh, you know, in, in this process. I mean, we're uh, amongst the luckiest people in the world that get to, I mean, you know, you're putting a ball through a ring and uh, you're getting uh, you know, the opportunity to do that every day. Uh, to get together, be a part of a team, compete. Um, I, I think I think it's just kind of who I am. I'm, I enjoy. I'm uh, somebody who's you know gets up every day extremely happy, uh, and and I love what I do. I love the people I get to do it with. Uh, I want our players to feel that same way. And um, you know I think I think when you can keep things light, keep keep, keep things in perspective, uh, and and make it a part of humor, a part of your daily uh, process, and it is for us. Uh, that allows uh, everybody from staff to players uh, to come to work and, and, and feel that sense of joy. And that's what we've done, uh, you know, at Lincoln Memorial, Indiana State, and what we plan to, to bring here. But it all starts with the people. Any other questions for Coach Shirts, fans, anybody? All right. Nope. Right here. I'm Mike Glines, a uh, fan, yeah. season ticket holder. You didn't speak to your, your assistants. How do you pick your assistants? How do you organize your, your staff? Well, if you look at my staff, I usually I try to find short, bald people so that will make me, you know, I don't look as bad in the pictures and stuff. So that's kind of how people would assume. But that's really not true. But people would say that, and maybe there's some accuracy to it. Maybe it's subconsciously. Um, you know, Staff, I've always tried to find uh, people to work with that are highly intelligent, um, have a great capacity for work, um, have high levels of humility, and are high character people. Um, those have been the four things I've always looked for. Like, if you can get people who are super intelligent, work incredibly hard, have humility, and are high character people, because if, if you if you uh, get the first two and you don't have the, the character piece, those guys can tear a program down. You know, if you're going to have somebody who's uh, really intelligent and works really hard but is a bad person, uh, they can bring an entire organization down. So uh, you got to have people that are high character people. I've, you know, been really lucky to surround myself uh, with that uh, over, over the last 16 years as head coach. Um, and without revealing too much, I think uh, – 
got a chance to have a staff that'll be as good as any in the country and can't look, could not be more excited to get to work and work with uh, these guys because it is a collaboration and I don't, you know, like anywhere, um, we work together and I'm a part of that, but uh, I think I'm going to have a staff that I'm going to learn way more from them than they will from me and I can't wait to, to start. Coach, with the slow-paced schedule that you have, uh, is the eclipse on your schedule today? <laughs> There's an eclipse today? <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to – I'll see. I, I, maybe I can see it out of my office window. I'm going to try to check it out. So I'll see if I can uh, – uh, th there's a lot of natural light in there. So hopefully I'll be able to catch it. Hopefully I'll be able to catch it. I'm sure I'll be working. So the second thing is, if you want to see Joy uh, <clears throat> on the basketball court, watch the last quarter of the women's game last Saturday. Absolutely. <laughs> you want to see the opposite of Joy, watch the last two minutes and 50 seconds of our NIT final. Uh, Coach Stu Duranda with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Um, I noticed that uh, from pictures back at Lincoln Memorial, you wore suits on the sideline. Um, you've been more uh, casual as the trend has moved that way for coaches. What can we expect from your um, sideline uh, <laughs> apparel? Ah, uh, geez. Um, I'm probably going to stay with the, uh, the, the, more, the more casual, although, I mean, you know, it, it, uh, I've seen it both ways, but my staff would be very angry with me if I went and made them all wear suits for games. So uh, I never was a big suit guy. Uh, you know, obviously I don't have like a, you know, model's body to just pick them off the rack. So I'm all about comfort in those games. And so I'm, I'm super uncomfortable right now, but I'm getting through it. So, um, but no, I think we'll just, just stick with the, uh, the casual Nike wear. And uh, uh, we just, whatever, you know, we try to play like the NBA. We're just going to try to also dress like the NBA as well. So we're just going to model everything up, up from there. Great question, though. Thanks, Stu. Any additional questions right here in the back? Ellie's going to come around. Hi, Coach. Uh, Rob Curtin, staff member and uh, men's basketball season ticket holder. What qualities do you look for, non-basketball qualities, do you look for in the students and families you recruit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time on, on somebody's competitive character. Certainly, uh, their inner circle is a huge piece of that. Um, you know, who's, who's in, their, in their corner. Um, but I, I think it's always, you get down to, uh, you know, we talk about shared values, right? And, and uh, you want guys that, that uh, you know, love to work, love to compete, or great teammates, right? I mean, there's certain intangible things uh, that you got to have uh, when you bring a group together because you're going to bring people from varied backgrounds, religions, parts of the country. There's not, you know, there's obviously all, all the stuff that divides you. And what really unifies teams is those shared values, right? So how guys look at work, how guys look at competition. Are they great teammates? Do they care about winning more than anything else? Are they, you know, do they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves? You know, the way we play, uh, there's a lot of guys who, you know, honestly would look at that and say, I don't want to play that way because of, one guy doesn't dominate the ball. We don't play with somebody, you know, just going out and taking, you know, 25 shots or, you know, uh, uh, in the, their, their, you know, the balls in their hands all the time. So um, now it's the way they're going to play at the next level. Uh, but they got to want that uh, for themselves. And, and, um, and the way we play, the way we do things, it's all about, you know, sacrificing, enjoying each other's success, uh, being invested in your teammates, being a great teammate and uh, competing, working. And um, so we hunt those shared values and, and the assistants that are, will come with me, a lot of the guys have worked with me, uh, they know um, I'm unrelenting in that area. We're never going to compromise on, on those, those intangible pieces because those intangible pieces are what allow you to succeed at the highest level. It's a good question. All right, Coach, over here to your right. This will be the last question here. My name's Aiden. I'm a season ticket holder. Um, how do you take a team with a rough year and bounce them back into like a winning team the next year? Well, uh, don't look at my first years at LMU or Indiana State, gloss over those. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I think, look, um, you know, this is a part of it. You know, a big part of life is, uh, is how you respond. And, um, you know, we've got to look at, uh, put a locker room together. You always, what wins is always the same thing. You know, you got to have elite talent and you got to have elite character to start. Then you get into all the intangible things, right? But it starts with putting a roster together that has the talent, 
and the character to compete for championships. Once you have that, then your competitiveness, the kind of teammates they are, all those other intangible things, uh, the way they work, all those type of things matter. So what we have to do uh, coming off last year is, is assemble a roster uh, that, that uh, of course, I mean, you can't miss any of one of those areas. If you're super talented, you know, the character, you're never going to win at the level you should. If you have great guys who are unbelievable uh, human beings, but they're not talented, you'll win less than the team that has talent and bad guys. So it's getting the combination of those two things together, the talent, the character, allows you to achieve at the highest level, win championships. Uh, championship teams are, are, are champions well before they're crowned. Our team in Indiana State, uh, starting back in June, you know, had championship habits, championship aspirations. And um, you know, they, they were crowned in March, but they were champions long before we cut those nets down. Great question. All right, Coach, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate everybody being here.